to date in Ash boards. Um, it's been a while we've worked on those actually. We just have one stream and it's a stream where we actually failed to fix some uh, temp sensors issues on the board. Uh, funnily enough, this is a board we've, it, it's actually the board we probably fixed the most um, in the recent years. Uh, we probably fixed the ten thousands of that Ash board uh, in the past and we only have just one stream so that's a that's a funny uh, funny thing to notice and um, nevertheless today we'll be doing some uh, repairs on those uh, ash boards we do have a lot more t17 um ash boards and units coming in to the shop for repairs mostly through our uh, ash no cash promotion if you are not aware about that promotion ash no cash is essentially a promotion where you can um, trade in some of your broken and minor uh, t17s and get more of your T17s fixed at a ratio of one for one. So what we mean by that is, for instance, let's say you have two T17 that are broken, you'll ship us both the T17s. You won't need to pay any cost for the repairs. We'll keep one as a payment and ship you the other one fixed. So there's been a lot of takers for that promotion, and uh, that's what we're uh, going through today. So I do have some boards that I've brought with me to go through uh, for this stream. And uh, most of them, as usually, um, the guys in the test room, they labeled the issue they could find in the machine. And we'll be looking at that uh, together and see um, what we can figure out together with that hashboard. So without further ado, let's go ahead and connect our T17 hashboard to the tester here. Um, so we'll be using the arc tester for that uh, repair stream, but do note that I have uh, started to uh, mess around. So as some of you more regular viewers have probably noticed, we work now with arc testers, we work with Pico BT, um, we work with the team miner tester as well. Uh, obviously we tried the Bitmain jig, but like this is just garbage we don't want to work with. And so lately, we've been trying also the Stasic tester. Um, I don't, I didn't bring it for that stream. Uh, first of all, I'm still getting used to it. And second of all, uh, one of my technicians here is pretty attached to it because it is a very great uh, tester. Stasic tester feels like the software is, uh, it still has a lot of work to be done. Um, it's not as convenient as using the Arc, but you are getting a chip map just like the Arc tester. Uh, one thing I do like a lot from the Stasic tester, though, is that all the web interface is locally driven, so there's no like cloud dependency on that tester. So this is this is pretty important for you know future proof of your tester, and this is one of the flaws I would point out of the Arc tester. Um, Arc tester, though, is much more user friendly. Still, it remains to this day the tester that I would say is the most user friendly. So it's the best to you know get started with repairs so far at least. Um, but I do think that the Stasic tester is going to be able to make some improvements and and make it easier in time uh, for new users as well. That being said, Stasic looks very amazing because it's um, I, I believe it's the uh, you know the um, micro contro controller uh, so the PIC controller essentially inside the tester that's pretty efficient actually and there is one testing mode that I did come to appreciate a lot with the Stasic tester and it made me uh, on the art tester there's the equivalent and it made me realize how powerful that feature is uh, I wasn't using it too much on my previous diagnosis but now uh, I started to use it a bit more and I, I get to enjoy it a lot that would be the uh, testing without pulling chips so we'll see if there's any opportunities to use that mode uh, to figure out some issues we have with our T17s. It's, I, I never tried to um, fix one of those issues with that um, mode on T17s yet. Uh, I did on S17 Plus mostly because that's what we had a lot uh, lately. I, obviously, S17 Plus are, are still profitable today. Um, but as some of you might know, T17s, if you install Brains OS, you can actually, uh, you can actually bring your machine to about... 1,700 watts uh, for about 40 tera hashes. Um, just this morning, I was consulting with a customer that bought some machines from us, T17 Plus, and we managed to get this T17 Plus at an efficiency of 29 watts per tera hash. I mean, this is actually better than T19s at this point, better price point than T19s, better return over invest. Uh, it's actually faster to return over invest on T17 Plus 
than it is on T19 uh, if you obviously optimize everything properly. Um, this was using uh, upgraded version of our machines with the upgraded heat sinks and so it makes it a very resilient machine so this customer is really happy he has a very decent ash rate the health of his miner is looking great and the efficiency is is just insane for the price point so this is the kind of stuff we uh, we do obviously with 17 series mostly 19 series they're starting to be some more optimization maybe to squeeze a better efficiency out of your machines but we still see a much bigger margin to do on 17 series and um, consequently 17 series are actually a better ROI than, than 19 series in most cases. So if you um, if you want to go ahead and look uh, for better optimization either with Brains OS, Vinish, do let us know, we'll help you with that. Uh, if you have broken 17 series obviously do ship away for repairs. Uh, if you want us to do the optimization or whatever we can do that as well and uh, yeah. Oh, and if you want to source units, uh, we'll probably have um, hundreds, if not thousands, of 17 series to uh, to list on the website, actually, because of all those uh, Ashmo Cash promotions. So do stay tuned. We'll have them for dirt cheap, and you're going to be able to get, I mean, better on ROI than any miner out there. I guarantee that, um, obviously, given you have the good economics for uh, running that hash rate, right? So we do have a hash board right here. I was about to go and grab another one. So let's stop speaking and let's get to fixing. Um, but I just realized somebody just left with the alligator clips there. <laughs> Let me just put some alligator clips back on that power supply. So let's bring this here. So the uh, the one of you that are um, you know more uh, used experience with T17s uh, will probably notice that they have that large heat sink in the center here, that large part. Something I notice is most of the time when you get that large uh, heat sink on the boards, those are great T17s. Not not in every every cases, but in like 90% of the case, it's an observation I've made. When you have those heat sinks, the heat sinks are going to be super solid. They're well soldered onto the, the the top of the chip, and so you don't have the same you don't experience the same issues than you would uh, with um, you know some other of the 17 series, mostly T17s that have the thinner uh, heat sink and mostly will have a lot of uh, delaminated chips. So this customer that sent us a batch of Ashmo Cash, he had both in his units, and it's something I noticed again. The larger heat sinks would, you know, be better tinned, and the smaller, thinner heat sinks would be more delaminated. And so, uh, so yeah, it's obviously more trouble when the machines are delaminated. As I've mentioned previously, to me, one of the biggest issues is not the actual repair, but the actual, uh, you know, getting a good adhes adhesion of the um, heat sinks on top of the chips. As you are probably aware, if you've been following us for a while. We do have a technique to retin the chips. So at the end of the day, it's not an issue, but it is very time consuming for us to fix all those delaminated chips, resolder the heat sinks back, and finally get to the repair. So that said, it's always uh, like we enjoy when we get a board that we know the heat sinks are going to be tough on. So this is what we'll be working on today. That should make the repair a bit more uh, nice to work with. Uh, so EEPROM looks good. Let's get started with a normal test and see what is the chip count on that board. And we're getting a zero ASIC. Um, so right, right off the bat, I'm getting zero ASIC. Oh, 18 chips now, and we're starting dancing. And this is so common with 17 series. So let's just stop that test right away. Let's not waste more time and let's try to uh, do a test without pulling of the chips and just, you know, we'll just use our head. So test without pulling, you'll notice in any case, it will never show the uh, chip map. The chip map is not able to load because there is no signal going on to the dashboard 
all the signal is being um, uh, well actually there's no signal at all that's it so we'll be able to make some measurements that are going to be more precise that way so normally I will start with my RX so let's go ahead and do that let's see if you have the multimeter on screen maybe sit it there so you have a better view let me just bring some items so you can get a better if I put it like that's too much maybe bring this how's that perfect so we'll go to our last chip and measure the RX and we can see our 1.8 here what I really like uh, from that test is look how stable my value is my value is not fluctuating at all because there is no signal going through it's just being powered on and so it makes the diagnosis the manu manual diagnosis at least of the RX signal much clearer than it would be otherwise so let's go ahead and measure RX the thing with this testing mode is you have to go through every single chips and go back your way like that but it makes it so much more reliable as a test so we're all good up until here still good perfect amazing got it now this testing mode will still get your board to become at uh, decently quick so you, when you work on a S17 plus you definitely need the fans under your board because there's 65 chips to go through but with T17 I should be able to um, to go through without any problems with all my fans under 1.7 Point seven still, still, still. So it looks like quick like that. We won't be getting a return problem today on this board. So it's most probably some issues like clock. Or it can be any of the other signals, obviously, but. We'll look at that testing mode there and look at our clock now. So, 84, we're perfectly in range. So, let's go back the other way. 84, 88 is good. 91 is getting a bit high, but we know that T17s, most of the time, they get uh, those uh, borderline values. Okay, we're still looking great so far. That's great. Good. Perfect. Okay. funny because a lot of um, people will focus on you know overclocking their units um, especially when they're like older generations so say s9 or t17s but I'm more in the school of thought of getting the best efficiency squeezing the best efficiency out of your units this one is a decently I will just mark that each sync to keep this in mind so yeah um, a lot of people will look into overclocking but really what I think people should be looking into is the best efficiency possible and those 17 series you can actually squeeze very decent efficiency out of it like it's comparable to 19 series for half the price point I just I just think it's such a no-brainer but a lot of people they discard the, nine, uh, the 17 series right now because of the, the issues they're known for mostly delaminated chips but there's a lot of solutions to, uh, to those problems um, so I think it's some laziness or just the market being unaware of how powerful the 17 series really are but uh, yeah that's it so unfortunately my uh, polling testing without polling didn't 
uh, turn out to um, to help us figure out the issue. So we know RX and clock, at least with just the power on, is looking great. So unfortunately, um, we don't have any hints there. We know that it broke in the machines at 27. Right now, the board is too hot for me to uh, keep on going uh, like that. So we'll just put this board aside. We know that this test is done now. We we'll get to another board in the meantime while this one cools down. Again, with the fat eat things we like. That guy, what's up, that guy? You've been uh, you've been following our streams very uh, carefully. It's fun to have you uh, with us. Agreed on efficiency, especially in a bear market. Is the T17 also delaminated, even if it's if it is lower watts? The thing is, it's really irregular. It's a bit like a lottery when you um, when you don't intervene on the ash board. So let's say you receive a batch that's been uh, you know mining in uh, Texas or or in China or whatever, and that that this batch is coming to you and didn't go through a maintenance center, uh, it is possible that you have already delaminated chips when you procure them. Say you have them uh, even new. The thing, and one of the main reasons I believe the delamination happens so much on the 17 series is because, say, say the thinner heat sinks, it's not because of the heat sinks that they're, um, they're holding better, it's because they're different batches, and some batches were well made and they have no delamination issues. Some other batches, they have that issue, um, what I notice is the fat heat sinks, most of the times, those batches, they don't have that issue. The real issue, so let me explain that, is that on top of the chip, uh, it seems like the machines that were built in Malaysia, most, uh, most uh, prominently, they, they have like not even a grain of salt of tin holding the heat sink on top of the chip. So even if you remove the, the heat sink from a new ash board that didn't hash at all, you'll see like most of the chip is actually exposed on the copper. And so what happens is with all the temperature differential going on with your mining, stopping mining, mining, stopping mining, etc., uh, that copper is just going to tarnish and, and the chip is going to become delaminated. So the real issue here is they should have covered the whole chip with tin. All the chips that have the like whole coverage from manufacturer of the tin, they don't delaminate. The one that delaminates are the one that had like a grain like a grain of rice on top of the chip of tin, that's it, that's all. They've pressed the heat sink on it, call it a day, shipped it to the customers, and then it ran uh, in those customers' hands for a while and got delaminated. All the heat sinks started falling away. Now those customers, they either don't want to run those machines, they have to get it fixed or, or, or whatever. So this is really the biggest pain point of the 17 series. But if you have either the right one or if you just retain all of your delaminated chips, which is actually possible. A lot of people will use glue on top of their T17s. I mean, this is the stupidest thing you can do. I did, uh, you know, um, mess around with thermal glue even uh, on top of uh, T17s. I mean, I understand I've been through that process of trying to find a, a solution, but really glue on 17 series is not a solution. I'm telling you, I've been going through that process. It's not a solution. Don't try it. Uh, you'll just create more damage than, than what you actually sold. Um, so yeah, so you can retain your, your, your chips or if the board is totally a mess and the whole chips are delaminated, just convert that to an upgrade uh, with the upgraded heat sinks and problems problem solved. And the upgraded heat sinks are actually good for immersion. They run much better even on air cooling. As I was mentioning, I, just this morning I had a customer T17 plus um, units, we were running 21, uh, tw tw 29 watts per tera ash on his units. It's it's like running T9, T19s. So he buys two T17 plus, it costs less than a T19, and he has more ash rate for the same efficiency. I think it's a no-brainer. Anyways, let's get to that second board and see if we can find any issue. Um, so EEPROM is good there too. Let's start with just a simple test uh, chip count. Oh, obviously it would be better if I power on my power supply. So let's stop that quickly and turn on again. 
Let's repair those T17s. Yes, Raz, that's been doing a four day streak of uh, L3 plus um, repairs here. Uh, I believe you might be doing a lot more of those L3 plus repairs in the future because we do have a lot more demand coming in for L3 plus. I guess, you know, there's been a, a, a decent, you know, uh, appreciation in price of Litecoin and Dogecoin. So I believe the L3 plus are just <laughs> unkillable machines. They just won't die either because of the um, uh, of the profitability or either because the units are actually very resilient while being resilient some of them still need repairs so we do we did repair some l3 for uh, adding to our shop which is now done uh, the the l3 plus that raz started to fix at the beginning of the year past their qc and are now listed on the shop so you can go ahead and buy those home heaters uh, and use those quiet fans that Raz was talking about. Um, and we'll be receiving probably a lot more L3 Plus because there are some customers that are interested into uh, fixing those for themselves as well. And uh, it's possible we get actually a, a decent chunk of L3 Plus. So it's really, really possible that Raz gets to stream a whole other week on L3 Plus. <laughs> All right, so this board we see it's stuck at 24. Uh, we see that something it happened on the unit two. Let's just stop the test here. We see that the tester actually, you know, had an issue here like the unit did. So this let us know that there's an actual something to, to look at there. Again, I just want to try to see with my test without pulling if I'm going to be able to see something without even referring to what the tester is saying. So let's go ahead and measure from the back here and, and let's just see. So let's start with uh, 1.7, 1.8 is good. This here is good, good, perfect, perfect. 1.7 again, 1.7. So let's just look at the clock of that domain. Oh, sorry about that. Here, 88, 89, 89, 91, 87, 92. So let me guess this one. 88. No. Okay. So this. So skip this one. So this is the source. So it really is possible that this is the chip that's giving us issues. It's not clear as um, as water though, uh, because if you look, let me just get a better grip. 91. 91 is really borderline. We know like 91 passes many times. But the thing is, and let me bring that back on screen. But the thing is. It's 90 here is good and a chip before it, we know it's most of the time when we get those issues, it skips two chips, but two chips before we get 89. So it makes me think that this one really probably has an issue. Now, if it's a clock issue, it's possible that we can see it if there is no uh, actual signal. So let's get back to this. We have Nat Nathanael saying, Wes, what's up? What's up, Nata? Let's just call you Nathan. It's going to be easier for me. <laughs> um, so let's get back to the chip pulling and see what we see. It's not impossible also that just, you know, the heat made us, like you see right now, it's going straight to 30. So it's possible that just because the, the board is now heated, we're not able to pinpoint the exact issue. So we'll have to go and do our test without pulling, but when the board is um, tempered down again. And those issues, as you know, the intermittent intermittency can be the uh, other one to uh, figure out because you see the issue, you don't see it, you see the issue, you don't see it. So it's not necessarily easy to diagnose. But yeah, I really think the source of my problem is gonna be uh, 25. I'm just gonna measure for the form, the other signals there, uh, make sure everything is good with the other ones. So 1.7, this is normal because I wasn't on the right domain. Here, 1.7 as well. Let's look at our BI. Yeah, normal bump on BI. Let's look here now. So 
So clock still high. CX. RX is gonna be good here. Um, PX and finally BI. Like the baseline of that BI is a bit lower and it's looking more normal. That BI is, whoops, sorry, that's clock. That BI here is, you know, starting with a little baseline. So it's hard to say between 24 and 25. The best way would be, again, um, do we have it here? Uh, we do have one. Jumping cable there. You can try to see. Or we can also launch the test in advance and see if something gives. Uh, yeah, I should remove a uh, heatsink here to be able to go and jump. So let's just try and measure our. Um, so <clears throat> we're advanced now. Let's try to measure our chips here again. Okay, let's look at RBI. Still pretty normal there. Okay. So again, I'll put this board on the side anyways because the other one is cooled. We think this is a chip will be changing. I just want to see if we do a test without pulling once it's cooled down, if we can see it a bit more obviously. And we'll do the change after then. Twenty-seven, so that would bring our issues to look. We want to look uh, especially at those two chips there. So let's go ahead and launch the test first with chip count. Sorry about that. Uh, first with chip count and then we'll put advance. Even though we know it won't pass. So is it starting or is drawing amps but it's not doing nothing. Okay, start advance. So advance obviously is failing, but we do have our 1.8 to the end. So we now know that this is confirmed to be working like our polling, uh, test without polling showed us. Well, we have this one at 91, but again, 91 is is borderline, so it's not uh, it's not super crystal clear that this is the one with issue. This one we wanted to look at again. This is normal. But this one we already have the um, the BI as well. That's a bit high, so this is one of the chips we wanted to look. Let's try and see. So 17 series, you don't want to lose too much time doing your diagnosis, uh, never ending. Uh, at the end of the day, you want to get uh, acting. Because time repairing those uh, miners cost more than the actual parts. So you rather save time than, than save parts. Bring some more here again. You are repair S19 control boards and PSU. So PSU, yeah, obviously we do uh, fix a lot. Control boards, they can be a bit more tricky. Um, so it depends on the issue, really. We, we don't fix all the issues on control boards yet. I think we'll get there, though. Um, but PSUs, yeah, except if there's something burnt inside the PSU, which happens from time to time, uh, we can fix essentially all the APW-12. Uh,
But yeah, I did uh, put my uh, head a bit more on the control boards, uh, 17 series, 19 series, uh, all the same. And uh, I figured, uh, I understood more some of the issues that I was um, having with my repairs. So I am able to uh, fix some of the issues uh, those control boards were at. For instance, uh, non-working fan, uh, I'm able to work. Um, if the uh, if there's just one green light on top of the control board, uh, after you try to update it to a 19 series, say you take a 17 series, update to 19 series, some of them just won't take it because of uh, new fuse protection. Uh, that took me some time to figure out. Uh, but I can actually swap apart and bring it back to life. Uh, what else is there? Obviously, anything else like uh, you know uh, fixing the you know uh, power supply plug, um, so the voltage co connector, um, power distribution on the control board as well. So most of the time, you know, if you look on the control board, say on on the downside you have your Ethernet port and you're looking on top. On the left part of most of those control boards, you'll get all the power distribution. Uh, so I did source of some of that, those chips and, and made some progress there as well uh, on fixing that, that kind of issues. Um, I mean, really, the only but the only remaining issue I, I still need to go through, I've been wanting to do it for a while, but I didn't get too much time, is getting more use with reballing uh, for doing, for instance, uh, CPUs, RAMs on top of the control boards, because most of the times, uh, with, with time and with, again, differential in temperature, you get cracks inside the, 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 the solders of CPUs and, and, and RAMs, and most of the time all you need to, know, to do is just, you know, take it out, clean everything, put new tin on top and, and reinstall, and uh, the issue should be resolved. But this is that one part that I still haven't done uh, so far. Oh, can you do videos on the control board in PSU? So PSU, we did put some of uh, our videos online to our um, YouTube uh, channel, so you can go ahead and, and watch. I think we have already four videos on the matter. Um, control boards, I do have only one short video so far. I will do more uh, content about that. Some, yeah, I brought some flux and chips. Nice, love it. So, yesterday uh, we were uh, streaming music uh, inside the uh, Raz stream for L3 Plus repairs. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the thing is, the video got flagged by YouTube, obviously, and uh, it got like copyright um, flagged or whatever. And so I wanted to start to uh, introduce, you know, uh, maybe playlists where we're doing repairs, but they wanted to take down the video, so I had to appeal it. Uh, I managed to appeal it and just remove some of the videos that had the copyright strike on. Uh, f so, so there's maybe 10 minutes of audio that's missing from the uh, stream of yesterday. Uh, but to avoid that uh, in the future streams as well, I guess we won't be able to uh, uh, add a playlist. We'll see, maybe there's some, uh, you know, we can make some verifications and make sure to use uh, only content that we're allowed to, um, that our overlords at Google wants us to, uh, to broadcast. Oh. So yeah, a lot, in, a lot in the works right now. Uh, as you all probably know, it's been 
harder times for sure for the industry because there's a lot of uh, failing um, players. Uh, either it be exchanges, but also some mining companies. Uh, just us, for instance, we had some contracts, repair contracts with uh, some of the institutions that are installed uh, here and here and there in North America. But right now, I would say retail customers have been better customers than institutionals uh, because they, well, retail customers, they keep on buying, they keep on stacking, they keep on fixing, they keep on doing everything, while the institutional players, they seem to be struggling with liquidity all over the place, uh, whoever you're talking to. So this is... Uh, this is something to keep in mind for the next bear market and you want to keep in mind you know who's been your most loyal and, and helpful customers and so a lot of people they like to uh, just focus on institutional miners and they uh, they don't want to serve retail customers as we've been you know I started with just one machine mining in my uh, microwave slot in 2016 and so I started as a retail I started with essentially no capital, I didn't publicly list or nothing like that, you know, we're doing with the capital we have and uh, we're making our way by our own means with our own talent and it's, it's been uh, doing great, doing it just that way, organically and so retail has been customers for us since day one and I mean it's been the best source of stability for us that said, we are working on a lot of um, stuff right now. Lately, there has been a decrease in repairs even for 19 series. Um, but with the Ashmo Cash promotion, I think it, it brought back some attention, some well-deserved attention, I'd say, uh, on, um, on fixing even, you know, uh, L3s, um, 17 series again, stuff like that, even uh, uh, 15 series, so uh, T7, uh, T15, S15. A lot of people are looking back into that. Uh, maybe some even some institutional players now are looking because it's a solution to avoid having to burn all their liquidity and um, well it, you want to get that ash rate back online right so we're finding some creative ways to have something interesting for our customers to have an interesting pricing for our customers as well uh, so for instance 19 series repairs uh, some customers would find the listed price a bit too high. So we say, all right, well, let's use your parts. Uh, let's, like, we won't source parts or nothing if it breaks. Let's just use your parts. We'll uh, consolidate and we'll take out chips from one of your unfixable hash boards and use those chips to fix all the other hash boards and make a better price for you, make a better deal. So we're very flexible. Whatever is the situation for you, if you have repairs you need to get done, and you think the retail price is a bit too high, uh, there's definitely something we can work out. Um, obviously, we you know, give and take, so we're not a charity, uh, but there's a way to uh, work together, find a flexible offer. Uh, so either use your parts. Um, is it worth repairing S17 in this market? Well, it depends on who's you, who you're asking. I'd say yes, for sure. Um, obviously, I'm a bit biased saying that, but. Uh, that apart, that aside, you just have to, f like, look, what's the price for S17? Look at hash rate index, you can go ahead and look at the uh, ASIC index price. And you're going to see uh, S17 right now still retails for about a thousand uh, US dollars. Um, so, is it worth fixing? I think so. The thing is, a lot of those players that have a lot of those hardware are actually broke right now. They, they're missing liquidity, they need to raise capital, more capital, because they looked to uh, you know, to uh, get bigger too too quick, too fast. So that's the real issue. There is there's a lot of liquidity missing from the market, and so right now those players that would need to fix those uh, miners can't do it. It's not that they don't want to. It's not that it's not worth to. It's that they can't do it. So that's the real issue I'm seeing personally. Uh, but is it worth fixing? I mean, it's a thousand bucks unit right there. Let's just let's just go ahead with another assumption. Let's say uh, S9s. S9s they are selling at the moment for nine dollar uh, US dollar a terash. So let's use that same figure and multiply that by um, S17. 
So that's 17, 53. Let's just do the maths uh, together on screen. And we're taking the worst assumption because we're actually using the efficiency of uh, S9 for, for that uh, case there. So 9 US dollars times 53 tera ashes, that would be 477 in uh, US dollars. And in Canadian, uh, at, the, at the moment, the, the rate is so bad between Canadian and US, it's about 1.4 times the rate. So it's something like 650 in Canadian dollars for uh, for S17 based on if it was the same efficiency of uh, S9, but it's twice the efficiency. Um, so again, it's anything in between 1,000 and 650 is, uh, is uh, definitely a decent value. Anything that's getting closer to 650 uh, is a real fucking deal. <laughs> Sorry about, uh, about that, I guess. But uh, it's really, really a good deal because you're, um, I mean, you're buying for the same efficiency as S9. So do people buy them? Uh, again, retail customers, yes. But the institutional players, they seem to be all broke right now, uh, apart for like one, two, or three uh, key players that are um, able to stack more ash rate right now. They're buying actually the ash rate from all the other institution, uh, institutional players that are failing right now. So yeah, it's... Uh, it's a really special market, and uh, there's a lot of panic right now, for sure. Um, but it's not the first that I see. Uh, I saw, you know, <laughs> on the last bear market, I remember in 2018, I remember seeing, like, dirt cheap S9s and L3+. Plus. And, I mean, even today, those L3+, Plus, they sell more than during the deepest depth of the bear market in 2018. So, no, that's, that's what's up. Uh, who are the key players? Well, I mean, you just have to look at the top 10 um, institutional uh, miners, and they're essentially the biggest key players for, for mining, right? I mean, whenever they buy or, or sell some hardware, they'll have an influence on the market because of their big volume. So you have uh, CleanSpark that's doing good right now, that's buying a lot of ash rate from the other uh, you know, miners that are failing right now. There's Core Scientific that's being put on the bankruptcy protection. Uh, there's, uh, what, what is there again? There's also uh, Mar Marathon Holdings. I think they're also struggling a lot. There's um, who's uh, been uh, put on bankruptcy protection as well, uh, Compute North. Uh, who else? You have also, obviously you have Ive. Ive has been doing great. Ive Blockchain has been doing great. Argo, they're having difficulties, but maybe they're going to get through it. Um, who else? Bitfarms has been doing great. Uh, I think uh, Bitfarms, are, I, I have a lot of hopes in their operations. I think they're doing great. I think Ben Gagnon, uh, the chief mining officer there, is a really, really great asset to that company. And I hope he stays there because he's doing such a great work. Um, what else? Just quick like that, I mean, th 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 those players, uh, you also have Riot. Riot is doing great. Uh, but yeah, you have like a handful of companies that are doing great and all the others that are really struggling right now. Power and power supply. So we wanted to go and see this chip to start. The test didn't start, that's why I couldn't measure nothing. And let's get back again. Is Bitcoin dead? <laughs> well, I don't know if it's a serious question or if it's a troll. I'll assume it's a troll because obviously uh, Bitcoin has been declared dead. I mean, uh, probably we, ha we have to see uh, the orb obituaries, but I think it's been like uh, more than 200, maybe 300 times that people have been declaring it dead. <laughs> So I'll I'll just assume trolling there because, I mean, so let's let's get back to the basics. Let's get back to the root and forget about all that crypto bullshit, right? Let's just think about Bitcoin. Like, what is it worth to own an asset that's unseizable and uncensorable that you can transfer anywhere in the world? That's one of the most liquid to transfer that you can exchange for any fiat currencies anywhere in the world, like. 
I don't think people really realize how better than gold this thing is. Like, it took me time when we started. Uh, at first, I was getting the meme of, yeah, like Bitcoin can be the next gold or, or something like that. But at some point, you really get you really get it. Like this thing, you get a Bitcoin node and it's essentially the same than buying a thousand dollar kit of chemicals and weighting stuff. Take a gold bar, put it there, start measuring with your chemicals. Is it real gold? Start waiting. Yeah, did I get the paid the real value I should be getting paid? Did I get the real weight of, of gold I'm expecting? With Bitcoin, you make a transaction, your node verifies that transaction. It's essentially doing that thousand dollar process for you for free when you receive. And for the sender, it costs like like they're cheap. It, even even when the price on chain gets to say five dollars or six dollars or even ten dollars, like this is so cheap for what it's doing and accomplishing. I mean, you get to transfer your money anywhere in the world without an account. Like, I can just go to the app store or, or uh, download an APK online or whatever, have a Bitcoin wallet inside of five minutes, no need for KYC, no need of nothing, nobody can stop me. I'll just receive the Bitcoins, give that address to someone. Money is information in that case, so I can transfer it to radio waves, I can transfer it to satellite, I can transfer it by the internet, I can transfer it in a, you know, in a JPEG, I could transfer it from a book. Uh, like, this thing is crazy. This thing is not done, man. Yeah. So the source again, because this one here, it doesn't jump. It's uh, within, whoops. It's within range there. But if we go at this one, we get to uh, 91 and then this one, skip one, go here, get to 92. So I'll just, I'll just uh, go and change this one. It is crazy indeed. Yes. Crazy times, man. I mean, we're witnessing one of the biggest transformation that we like that we could could be given to 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 see i mean just having gone through the uh, internet transformation has been something but i think this is this pushes it even further it's essentially the separation of state and money and and like in such a way in such a design elegant design that like is unstoppable there's nothing to to be done with that can stop this thing it's so powerful can you think of a way for Bitcoin to die? Well, the only way I can see uh, is if there's any, if there's anything better that comes out. And so that's why a lot of those crypto scam projects, they will, uh, you know, uh, present themselves as the Bitcoin 2.0 or as a better version of Bitcoin or whatever, because it's the only real threat to Bitcoin is getting something even better than that, that we didn't think of so far. Um, but I don't believe that they to to be here yet, at least. Uh, so anything that you know, uh, name it Ethereum, Monero, whatever, they're all great in their own way, if we want to say that. But like it doesn't uh, it doesn't do the Bitcoin mission the same way than uh, than Bitcoin. Simply as that. I mean. I've been having a bit of a soft spot for Monero in the sense that I think there's market demand for it. I can see some markets built around it. Uh, so definitely, I mean, there is demand there and I'm, you know, I'm a market oriented person. So if there's a market for it, I mean, uh, I won't like say that it's, it, sh it shouldn't exist. But when I look in the, f when I project myself in the future, what do I expect to uh, uh, pass the, t the test of time? And I think it's Bitcoin because I think all the features that are really nice that are embedded into Monero, we can embed them into Bitcoin and we can already, uh, you know, r reproduce a lot of that stuff to say CoinJoin uh, using li Lightning Network. Lightning is, is very powerful, much more powerful than people expect. And it's doing a lot more uh, than people would think. Uh, BTC and ETH merging. 
uh, well, I don't think it's going to be merging together. Uh, I think both serves a different purpose. So for instance, Ethereum, um, I think is more of a platform. Uh, so I think it makes sense for them to have gone to uh, proof of stake because really a, a platform doesn't need a uh, blockchain. It doesn't need, uh, you know, proof of work. It doesn't need that sacrifice we're doing uh, of energy. Um, it doesn't even need decentralization. I mean, you're just trading the equivalent of Pokemon cards. It doesn't, you know, need adversarial thinking like Bitcoin does. Money is the, you know, we say it's the root of all evil. Uh, there's a reason for that. It's because it's it's so embedded, uh, and, and it's a tool. It's an instrument. I think it's great. Money is great. Uh, people demonize it. The thing is, it's uh, the alignment, the incentivization right now in our money system is disaligned with our own interest as as humans, and so that's what's the real issue uh, to me. Um, but yeah, really, uh, Bitcoin and, and Ethereum has nothing to do. So the merge, I, I don't think we'll see a, a, you know something coming together. I think Ethereum has found its niche now, where it's uh, you know doing NFTs and and stuff like that. So the equivalent of Pokemon cards, and Bitcoin is being money that's going to resist to the temptation of say Russia, China, North Korea, U.S. So all the you know the the, the superpowers that are uh, you know that have interest in controlling, you know, uh, money flows like we've seen. For instance, uh, you know, we, we can think what we want about what's happening in Russia and Ukraine right now. Uh, whatever, what side of that conflict you're on, there's one thing we can keep in mind, though, is that the U.S., with all the occidental, you know, um, countries, unilaterally got together and prevented, blocked Russia from being on SWIFT. And so essentially they've, put them outside of the monetary system, like isolated them. And so you get a lot of countries like, for instance, maybe India right now that are looking in, into this and are saying, oh, wait a minute, like they have the power to essentially cut the cord, like they can cut our financial cord and take all our, our independence with them. So I think a lot of, you know, those countries are looking into alternatives and they're looking into ways to to exert that, that, that control uh, over money, uh, just like the U.S. did. With that example and so it's really important for us you know the the actual humans the the actual people doing the labor the actual people you know building the roads and all that stuff uh it, it's important for us to have money that that can be influenced um can you know, if we accept lightning donations yeah we do i can actually uh, send you uh, uh i should make um, we have a bdcp server uh so i should make just uh, you know the, the equivalent of a patreon a page there on our uh, BTCP server, and you can go ahead and make Lightning notation uh, donation there. Uh, we could also, you know, start a new uh, Lightning torch or anything like that. I'm really up to it. And Usama, I you weren't there yesterday. We were uh, asking for more uh, which miners you uh, you want us to uh, see fix, and I was waiting for you typing the T2T. <laughs> so here you are, uh, Joe. T2T repair video when it's going to come? Please make it going to help a lot of people and we need more what's minor videos as well yeah so i'm always having the same issue when you're asking me about that is i don't have any broken t2t's <laughs> so i need to break one myself so uh so i can show you on stream how to fix it <laughs> So I haven't been uh, super efficient in my repairs in this stream so far. I've been talking and talking, but I really like doing that and, and you know, getting in uh, in sync with you guys. I think we're having a good conversation here, important conversation. Uh, I think it's a conversation that too many people that are involved in Bitcoin is uh, ignoring. Um, a lot of people are involved in Bitcoin without really knowing why they are. And it's something that's been really uh, painful for me actually because uh, for instance I remember when I was going to Mining Disrupt this year uh, I went to Mining Disrupt um, in Miami and I felt like a lot of people knew their stuff business wise but I felt also that a lot of people didn't know their stuff about Bitcoin like they didn't know why they were mining and that that was so like to me it makes no sense like why are you in this industry and well you guys probably know the answer, money.
but the thing is they weren't there for the fight for money they were there to make money and it's all right i mean we have to make money even myself i'm looking into that right i, I it's the only way my company can survive but like you also have to know the mission you have you have to know why you're here man you have to know why you why bitcoin is going to make it why it's superior and too little people knew that um but i remember meeting a uh, Margi- argentinian guy there and he was saying that um himself and a lot of people in the country right now because of that inflation and there's a lot of uh, capital sh- capital flight you know uh, prevention um, laws that are passed so i believe it's 200 the equivalent of 200 dollar us they can't buy more than that in foreign currencies per month because uh because they know their currency is devaluating too much so to prevent more devaluation from going on they have like obviously offshore markets and dark markets right because whenever the government gets involved dark markets are just going to come and fill the void and so they have those uh legal markets where they can buy only 200 dollars of foreign currencies they're buying obviously mostly us um and they have to go to dark markets where they have to buy like at twice the rate so say a us dollar would be uh, I, i don't know the argentinian um rate there but let's just say it's uh, one one of their local currency to uh, 10 usd say So when you go to the dark market, obviously it's going to be 20 USD, uh, or no, say it's going to get you five USD. Sorry. Um, so I was asking to him. So all right, a lot of people clearly are using USD, but are they also US- using Bitcoin? And he says yes, and he says all they're using it also to trade for US and all that stuff. So I'm I'm like yes, that's great, but even more than that, are they actually like just stacking bitcoin to transfer to us to then make a purchase or are they like is there a lot of people also buying milk with bitcoin and what he was saying is yes there was a lot of people buying milk even through uh, lightning that there's a lot of uh, merchants there accepting uh, bitcoin through lightning and a lot of people already that are you know avoiding using that local currency and a lot of them will use usd but there is a there is a niche growing in argentina of uh, bitcoin users and uh, bitcoin merchants So this is the kind of conversation I really enjoyed from my uh, uh, journey into mining the shrub. But the uh, conversations about, uh, you know, just plugging more and more and more and more ash rate without really knowing why uh, is something that bothers me a bit. Uh, Piano Cat, I wonder if Lightning will be the main way to transact, to transact. What happens when mining rewards are low and miners won't profit anymore from the block fees? Well, the way I see it is uh, Lightning Network really is just a way to um, to create massive transactions. So I have one transaction that includes so many other transactions. I see it a bit like a finality. So I've been, you know, um, in the banking industry before my, my stay in Bitcoin. And so I understand a bit more maybe the mechanism of how it works in the background. And so when you deposit a check, it is true that uh, it will process to your uh, branch. It will take maybe four, five, six business days, depending on your location, to um, to unfreeze and be, become available for you. But those funds, they didn't actually move. What happens in the bank is you deposit that. They confirm, say, okay, this other bank says uh, like the, that we have to take those funds. They will ask that other bank through systems, uh, uh, informatized system, and they'll say, okay, um, that customer deposited a check from that bank account, a thousand dollars into our bank account. Is that right? Do you have? Does that customer have that uh, on uh, on balance? And they'll say yes. He has it on balance. Okay, remove that from his balance. Okay, remove. And then on the other side of the uh, of the transaction, okay, we'll add a thousand into our customer's account. But it's only at the end of the month that all the balances are going between those different banks. So so they temporarily create that money there, temporarily remove it from the other side. But in the bank books, the 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 uh, how to say the um, Uh, the account is still the same. It's they still have the same amount of money. It's really only at the end of the month where they make one transfer of all those different checks that transferred. So say they have a thousand customers that made a thousand checks. 500 went that way. 500 went that way. Let's just say that there's a differential at the end of the day of 10k going there. Um, well, they'll just remove the 10k here and add the 10k here, and it's done. 
to cover all those thousand different transactions there. So to answer your question, PionoCat, uh, what I'm thinking is we'll see something similar on Bitcoin mine chain. And obviously, when you get more and more important channels, they'll be inclined to put more and more important fees uh, added to their transaction to have all those other thousand transactions, you know, being uh, processed with priority. Um, so it's the way I see it. Uh, there's other different second layer solutions as liquid as well. I mean, one doesn't prevent the other from working. So you can have liquid and at the same time have Lightning Network working and that's something great as well. Uh, there's always gonna be some demand for on-chain transactions. Some uh, people are gonna prefer, you know, to uh, to uh, even do off-chain transactions. Uh, for instance, open time. So there's a lot of, of figuring out still to do on how people are gonna uh, behave with all of that. Um, but that said, I think there's, first, there's going to be enough room for everybody, uh, given that we do the optimization properly. And second, I think the fees are going to be just enough because all those smaller transactions pulling into one is going to justify a bigger fee for that one transaction uh, on chain. And Usama, we are becoming friends, Joe. You remember my name? It means a lot. <laughs> yes. I was actually expecting you yesterday. I'm telling you. <laughs> But it means a lot to me too, because it means you've been uh, to a lot of our streams and I'm really happy about that. Uh, we try to uh, you know, build a community there and damn, you know a lot of stuff. Man, I've been uh, involved in Bitcoin since uh, pretty early. Uh, it's something I'm really passionate about and I'm, I, I believe I'm passionate about for the right reasons because those are the ideologies that's been uh, driving me to get involved into Bitcoin. So, um, so yeah, that, that's what that's the stuff I, I get interested about, and that's why I like to uh, chat with you guys about all that stuff. You know, CoinJoin, uh, Lightning, uh, Unchain, Mining, whatever you want to talk about. I think uh, we can have a, a fairly good conversation about it. Now this, uh, yeah, this one is, uh, no, my bad, because I was still here. Good. Those boards are a bit frustrating in the sense that there seems to be a lot of intermittency, so it's going to make it a bit harder to um, troubleshoot. And that is a shame because <laughs> so far, the only other T17 streams we have is, is one that I actually had an issue where that boost chip burnt so much that we couldn't recover it. So I really hope we'll get at least a, a success on that stream for T17s because it's the board we fixed the most and it's the one I don't have on, on stream. I really would love to see streamers connect LN URL with the on-stream notifications. Uh, we, like, what, what do you mean exactly by that? Uh, you mean to uh, use LN URL to do the stream and you know streaming SaaS, the concept of streaming SaaS, I guess? So every, say, second or minutes you're on, there's a given amount of SaaS that are streaming to the uh, content provider? Is that, is that what you're talking about? Oh, actually, this passes. All right. We'll put the date things back on. We'll measure again if uh, we're getting a pass on the advanced and temp sensors. If we do, we'll ship it to a unit. And if there's a remaining issue, the unit should let us know. I mean, donate via Lightning and have a text-to-speech message. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, well, there's definitely a way to do that, I'm sure. 
one, one day, uh, actually pretty shortly, what, what I should show you guys, we have, uh, we have not built ourselves, but we used um, an arcade. Uh, my, some of you might know the Arcade 1UP. Uh, they're like reproduction of arcades, and so we've bought one for Pac-Man. And we actually removed the buttons to add credit and put um, M5 stack instead. And on the, that M5 stack, we uh, show an LN URL. And um, when you pay that request, it has a credit to the arcade. And so we've brought that to a conference. We went to uh, ACFest, I believe it was um, end of October. Yeah, it was uh, j the, the weekend of the Halloween. So it was end of October. We've brought that to the uh, ACFest, which is essentially a uh, um, medium-sized, I'd say, conference about uh, hacking here that happens in uh, Quebec. And uh, I think it was pretty successful. A lot of people, uh, you know, so there's a lot of hackers going to that conference, obviously. So a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people that would say the qualifications are, are pretty there and they know what Bitcoin is. Uh, but there's also a fair share of you know, business people that are going to those conferences to learn about hacking and learn about what they should be um, you know, aware of. And so a lot of those business type people, they were stopping by our stand and playing a Pac-Man game and uh, we would show them how to make that lightning payment and add the credit. It got a lot of interest. Uh, so uh, I think you guys will enjoy uh, it. We'll, we'll try to do a, sh a short video to show you uh, what we've built, but it's it's just a small project for fun. Uh, but I think it's nice, man. Is Pico BT tester is good for West Miner or in Silicon Miners? Actually, it's good for both. Uh, so Pico BT, uh, you can test your West Miners, you can test uh, most of no Silicon Miners, you can test the T2T definitely. Uh, I have to see again, but I believe the Stasic tester which I just got is also able to do uh, T2Ts. Uh, I know they can do some of the you know as well and some of the what's miners as well. Um, so yeah, Pico and Stasic are getting to be some of the most useful uh, testers uh, because they do so many models all, all in one, right? Uh, Pico is definitely less user friendly. Stasic is uh, in between between Arc and, and Pico. So it's not as user friendly, but you can definitely get get there if you learn how to use it. And I think it's really powerful. Uh, as I was saying in the beginning of the stream, Stasic Tester, it looks like the uh, big controller inside is uh, very good hardware, very resilient. Raz, where could we put those little video of stuff we do, Joe, like Pac-Man Machine? Well, actually, we can just um, maybe create a playlist on our YouTube channel. And uh, so let's see, maybe you guys have some names we can give to that playlist. Um, what, what could it be? Uh, you know, Ellen Projects or whatever, but I, let's try to find a, a nice name, something, uh, something more, uh, more in sync with the space, you know, something with uh, Ani Badger or Lightning, uh, what, what, what could it be? Anyways, we could just add it to our YouTube channel in that special playlist where we do uh, those uh, special projects. I didn't found out to put them in Discord. So what do you mean, Raz? You, you tried to upload videos of uh, the Pac-Man um, machine we've built directly on Discord? All right, we'll let this one cool down. Get to the other one we put aside. Yes, and Discord doesn't authorize video uh, or bigger quality pictures. Yeah, the thing with Discord is um, they have that uh, Discord Nitro thing. And so we have to, uh, I think we need like five piece, five different people or, or it can be all the same. But I mean, it's uh, it takes five like subscriptions of Discord Nitro to a server where you it's essentially a vouch you do to the server. And then they, they unlock all the premium features. 
So um, so it's a way for them to monetize, obviously, the, the servers they're putting available for the community. But the thing is, yes, as you've mentioned, you can't, if your uh, server doesn't have at least five Discord boost or Nitro, I don't recall exactly how they call it, uh, you won't be able to post too large uh, content so we're better just just using uh, YouTube and making a specific playlist for that and then put the link into the discord channel zero is it And I want to show you here. I'm getting. Seems like I'm missing some something here. This chip. This chip here is not giving me my return anymore. This one is good, but this one we're missing. Okay, I just want to see if we do the test without pulling, if we're getting uh, the same reading. So here, even here, I'm not getting nothing good. Should be getting my 1.8 from this one. So this is why I like the test without pulling. It's because you can see a much different Thing that you would see with the signal um, but sometimes it can also become a bit more confusing because now which one is the actual uh, shenanigans playlist yeah yeah so far this is the winner all right so now I have my 1.8 now that the board got eaten and at first I didn't get it he, from here out of the test without pulling and here with the chips so really I would tend to uh, to change the um, the 3d chip it's also possible that by installing this one you know the heat that got around maybe uh, created a bridge there if there was any uh, solder ball or something like that so we'll just go ahead and have a look but I I would start with this one before anything else Because of the sun going through the the windows and we have those uh, you know those grids it looks like I'm in I'm in prison <laughs> Oops. there you go clean enough I don't see no dirt so we'll just go ahead and apply some flux while it's hot and get to the chip installed and look look at how let's just bring that uh, here actually making it worse 
starting to see because of the um, of all the lights. So let's go back to the other camera and bring this one here. Actually, look at how thinned this is. How well thinned it is. So those were delaminated chips, and it's just to show you how our process saves the chips. Just to show you that something that would be useless in some other hands becomes useful again in ours. And then they say that uh, mining and miners don't recycle and, and burns the planet. Also proud to say that we um, actually got the uh, the central. Uh, we got them. Uh, we got us actually on the. Um, how do we call that? Uh, it's a program for recycling electronics here in Quebec, and so we're on that program now. So we're a deposit point for all the uh, old electronics. So if there's any uh, Quebecers on the chat right now uh, or on the stream watching afterwards or whatever, uh, just know that you can come and drop ship anything that uh, any of your old electronics. And we're now certified to uh, get it recycled in the uh, most environment, environmentally uh, friendly way. So I think that's great. And it's uh, end in end with the mission we have. Is that the chip? The one I was showing is the um, is actually a chip that was delaminated, that I've written uh, through our process, and so pretty sure if you go ahead and ask most of our competitors, they'll tell you that delaminated chips they can't do nothing with it, and I understand because I've been going through that myself. It's took us uh, too much time to uh, figure out how to solve that. But we found a way, and so right now, if you uh, want to send us your uh, old delaminated chips that have no use for you, we can go through that process of, of making a recovery of those chips for very, very cheap. Uh, we'll bring it back all in, all for you, and, and ship it back to you. Um, wherever you're located, you can ship like 10,000 chips, we'll go through it, then everything we can bring back, test everything to make sure that you only like you, you you can send us a pack of say 10,000 delaminated chips you don't know if they're working or no uh, but they're all delaminated we'll return each and every one of them and then test each and every one of them to make sure they uh, they pass and make two different bags say one that's uh, working one's not working if you just want to source chips just go to our website they're pretty uh, they're dirt cheap right, right now i believe we're send, we're selling the lot of uh, 100 of BM1397 chips uh, written like like the one I just showed you for 300 Canadian dollars so <laughs> I think it's uh, you can't get any cheaper than that I'm not a tech guy at all is an ASIC only for ash function or can it be used for anything yeah so it's only for ash functions for the uh, algorithm is designed for so say uh, for instance um, T17 is gonna do uh, shot 56 uh, multiplied by shot 56. So it's um, uh, I'm having a, a blank in my memory right now, but essentially double shot 56 functions. Uh, and uh, for instance, L3 plus that Raz was doing uh, for the rest of the week, uh, those are script algorithm. So you're gonna be able to, for instance, you could use an ASIC to say brute force a password that use. Uh, one of those algorithm as is if it's using an algorithm like this as is the thing is most of uh, say uh, password encryption is going to be in AES or it's going to use one type of uh, shot 56 function but not a double shot 56 function so uh, except for doing mining it's uh, or eating <laughs> it's not uh, like there's not many um, 
uh, alternative use for ASICs. And for Bitcoin, I would say that's a great thing because it really narrows the attack vector. So it really, you know, uh, lowers the chances of getting an attack. Then, for instance, uh, Ethereum, when it was using GPUs for mining, I mean, it, GPUs are really accessible and that's cool and, and, and it's great in the spirit of decentralization from one point of view, but from the other point of view, it also lets an attacker stack 51% of the hash rate decently easily with hardware that's, you know, very accessible and with hardware that, you know, there's already enough GPUs in the world that are installed in PCs that you could just, say, infect all of them with a remote access Trojan or something like that. And, and then, you know, use all that GPU processing power to make an attack on, say, Ethereum. Uh, same can happen with, say, Monero, which is using uh, CPU mining. There just needs to be a strong enough malware that's installed on enough zombie PCs or enough zombie devices to make an attack and then take 51% of the hash rate. This won't be possible with Bitcoin because it's being, uh, because the capital deployed is having only one function, only one use, the ASICs. The only way for an attacker to, you know, to not lose on making that move is to actually connect that hash rate and to actually help securing the network and so it, it's uh, GPU mining to me has always has always been something that I find weaker uh, than ASIC mining for the higher goal of protecting your blockchain right so so yeah that's what I, that's my comments on on ASICs and the <laughs> being used only for for hash functions I see some people use an SEO scope to repair ASIC. Uh, why and how does that work? So yeah, we do have one as well. It's just there. Obviously, we have more than one, but I mean for that station here. Oscilloscope. Um, oscilloscope is going to be more useful. Sorry about that. My clip just let it go over. <laughs> All right, anyways, what I was saying is um, the oscilloscope is going to be more useful for signals. And so when you're doing those signals tests uh, on your board, which is the standard testing mode, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, there, uh, it's going to allow you to visually see the signal. So you know it's like waves going like that. It's a uh, sine wave. So you, you, you can have a look at those waves and see any anomalies in the signal. Say uh, you expect... For instance, BI, you expect a jump on the signal every uh, two seconds or so. Uh, clock, you should expect a certain shape in your in your wave, and you should expect a certain you know amount of time for a wave to uh, completely form. And so this allows you to visually inspect the signal and see if you can figure out some anomalies that just testing with the you know what we're doing with the multimeter right now is we're doing a measurement of the DC voltage values of a given signal, and we know that that the values should be within this range and the other range. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> so uh, so you know that you have to to uh, to have your values between this range and this range in DC, but it doesn't tell the whole the whole thing. So you might be within range uh, with the power, but uh, your signal is actually you know uh, distorted. And it's something you, you know those uh, that trick I'm doing when I'm skipping a chip. Is, is a way to logically do it without the oscilloscope, but it's actually this exact problem. Say, say you have a source um, in, your, uh, in your clock here, a source of problem here, but it's just good enough so it passes. You'll skip this one and you'll see the problem here a bit higher. Skip, a bit higher, skip, a bit higher, just like that until you get to that, say, that, that chip here. You'll measure, you'll see one volt. You're supposed to be at uh, 0 0.7 or 0 0.9. So the way you can visually see that with the oscilloscope is you're going to see here a small deformation in your clock signal. And the further you move on the board, you'll see it's like, um, uh, how do we call that in English? It's uh, engrenage in, uh, in French. Um, I just can't recall right now. But it, so because it's starting to mess here it just gets worse and worse and worse and the the um, the signal is getting way more off the more you uh, advance further in the board 
So I'll take a leave here, Joe. It's very late night here, by the way, from India. Please make what's minor in Nostricon or other types of minor videos as well. I appreciate your work, brother. I appreciate you being with us, uh, Usama, and I swear the moment I have a T2T that's broken, I swear that very moment I have it, we're going to start the stream and, and ping you in it. So you're going to be able to, uh, to go ahead and see that. And yeah, Raz was saying, uh, be careful, if you break something during the stream, you need to fix it during the stream. So <laughs> let's be prudent there. Fortunately, it's not one of my partners that's here, uh, Gabriel, which is uh, one of the co-founders of Decentral, uh, <laughs> because he's even more clumsy than I am. And the stream would never end because something will always break. <laughs> All right, so that that did it. Let's see in advance. Indeed. <laughs> That's it. Perfect. So a second board there. How long has it been? One hour and a half. We have two boards. It's not too bad. 45 minutes in, on average per hash boards is good. I think T17s, uh, we can definitely hit a 30 minutes on average per hash board. But what's acceptable to me is one hour in hash board. So, so far, we're still within the uh, acceptable range. But Let's try to crank up a bit on the next uh, repairs. <clears throat> Sorry about that. No, us Canadians, always sorry. <laughs> I don't want to bother you too much. Uh, you are not, by the way, Piano Cat. I really enjoy those kind of interaction. It gives me energy. So uh, please go ahead and bother me more. But how are your miners doing right now? Ash rate is high, but BTC is low. How can they still operate? Uh, well, first of all, it, obviously, so there's a lot of ways to monetize uh, mining. First of all, you're going to need good mining economics. So having a good, you know, um, power source that's that's cheap to uh, to use is always uh, useful one more thing to keep in mind is that here in canada i'm using you know the, the fiat i'm using is canadian dollars so relatively to usd canadian dollars has been falling a bit and bitcoin is mostly priced against usd and so if you look against canadian it's been it's been uh, decreasing yes but m at a lower rate than it is against usd uh, because Canadian has also been decreasing against USD, so it plays a bit in our favor here because my cost in, in, in energy is in Canadian dollars, and so that's good for me. Um, what else? Obviously, you want to have different source of incomes. You don't want to put all your eggs in the same basket. So, uh, for instance, we have repairs. Uh, we have, uh, you know, the training sessions we do. So if you want to go ahead and, and learn a bit more about ASIC repairs, maintenance, um, you know, just how to run a mine, uh, having a business plan, whatever it is, we do consulting, we do training, we do uh, uh, on-site courses, we do also, uh, you know, um, outsourcing. So if you need a technician to come to your facility, you have, say, 100 machines that are broken, don't want to ship them all to us, you can just ship the technician to, uh, to you instead and make the repairs on site, on your site. Uh, what else is there? Uh, there are a lot of things. Uh, we've visited also one of my business uh, development partners has been uh, going to uh, Paraguay, looking into, uh, you know, uh, good mining sites. Um, we're also looking into container solutions into Alberta. Uh, so if you do have some hosting you want to get, you know, uh, positioned, we do have some... Uh, right now we have a container that we can do as a referral. So uh, we have a, a partner there that's in Alberta where we can um, place some of your miners. But uh, we also are working on one of our own... Um, 
containers in Alberta. Ship the technician, yes. Put it in a box label as a as a as a repair warranty repair so it doesn't get any customs. Ship the ship the technician. <laughs> But yeah, for sure, uh, that's why we see a lot of uh, mining companies in such a distress right now, especially those that are uh, getting, you know, uh, uh, squeezed by variable power rates. Uh, we see a lot of that in the United States right now, uh, and a lot especially, and surprisingly, in the Texas. Uh, so, variable power rate was a good idea until it wasn't, just like mortgages, right? So for sure it's a special year. I don't think a lot of people were expecting the market action we're seeing this year. And it caught a lot of miners by surprise. And I think one of the things we see is also there's a lot of panic movement that just simplifies the uh, already installed panic that's in there. But really, you have to remember, uh, people misallocate stuff when they're in panic mode. So right now, I think a lot of even even some of the uh, big time miners, they're having a hard time to actually, you know, to uh, give an actual um, uh, valuation to what they're doing and to their hardware and and it, but it is a tough tough game. I've been uh, this central has been open since 2016, and you know it's it's uh, recurring questions always to. Uh, figure out how to make it through the, the next, you know, bull cycle, because obviously it's, it is rough to go through those bears and going through a bear in, in, in Bitcoin is like going through a, like a financial crisis in, in the other industries. I mean, it's really very violent, uh, but me as an entrepreneur, I feel it's making me stronger. It makes me, it's, it makes me, you know, uh, much more resilient. So it's something I enjoy. I think we're in, like I, I like being a settler, and I, that's what I feel we're doing here. I, I feel we're, you know, planting our flag and and making the the path on the snow. Uh, speaking speaking of snow, it's been a good week and a half now. We have that white bullshit outside. I just already can't stand winter. <laughs> I'm I'm not a good Canadian for that. Uh, another board. Usama, open up a branch in India. There's a lot of scope of ASIC repair shops. Not a single person available to repair these machines in India. Yeah, but it's it's something that's going to come. And I'm pretty sure I actually saw one of your peers doing repairs in India. So if you want, maybe just uh, send me a DM and I can put you in touch with, with them. I, I think they're trustworthy, but I wouldn't you know, put my hands on it because I didn't deal with them personally. But I, I'm pretty sure I'm aware of a repair, is a repair shop that's located in uh, India and they look like they're doing a, a fair enough job. So maybe I'll put you in touch with them. Um, but yeah, definitely, I would love uh, having like having enough capital. I would definitely open more AC repair shops in different locations uh, because, you know, it's uh, I think it's going to be a billion dollar industry given the right time. It's just that there are those cycles that are playing against us and the world economy also right now is playing a bit against us. Um, but yeah, India, uh, I think is one of the only countries in the world right now that's been doing, uh, that, that's getting a positive economic uh, growth uh, this year. So I think there's a lot of opportunities there, uh, definitely. Well thought. Shoot a Bitcoin miner into sun orbit via satellite, infinite energy. Yeah. So there, there was those, um, those that thought also, you know, maybe have a, you know, a kind of, yeah, a satellite or orbit, exactly like you're saying, harness the solar power and use that to, uh, to uh, mine with the Bitcoin miners. There was some because this, this gets into like definitely big advanced physics, and there was some. Uh, constraint to doing that, I believe it had to do with the with the heat um, actually waste. Then it's not as simple. We would think, at least I was thinking, since you're in space, like I mean, infinite free, um, you know, uh, cooling for your miners, and as you say, solar harnessing, so you can uh, use that for mining. But there was some constraint that I can't recall right now, and 
you know, it's physics is not my thing, so I can tell. But uh, yeah, it would be a nice idea, though. <laughs> Be a nice project, uh, something, and you guys let me know if you think it's uh, it's definitely not useful content. But something I had in mind, maybe some of you guys will remember. Um, uh, you know, there was some videos on YouTube when YouTube started, like uh, Will It Blend, which was made by the company Blendtec, and they would like put an iPhone into it and try to blend it. And I've been thinking of some like stupid stuff like that. And what I, something I really wish to do, and I still haven't done the experiment. And, and if we do it, I want to do it like, I want to record it, uh, is, you know, try to fry an egg or, or something like that on, on a hash board that's working. Uh, so you let me know if you'd like to <laughs> see that kind of stuff and maybe we'll try it. Uh, probably we'll do more damage on that board than fixing though. <laughs> We have cheapish electricity in Quebec and need the heat. Yeah, so in Quebec, we do have uh, very affordable uh, energy. So that's really nice. One more thing that's nice is it's one of the lowest emissions form of energy that's uh, being produced in the world. So obviously, we have to be proud of that. Uh, I drew Quebec uh, do have a lot of uh, stuff that we don't enjoy. But they're also, you know, at the end of the day, they do have a, a good um, uh, outlook. I mean, it's good operations. We're, we can be proud of uh, the electric grid we have here in Quebec, definitely. Um, we and we also, like I was saying, like right now there's already snow outside. Uh, so obviously in Quebec we do have a lot of need for uh, heat reuse. And that's one of the most, uh, like that's one of the things I want to make a focus in the coming months and years uh, because I think there's a lot to be done there because I mean you don't even need you can look into an S9 L3 plus whatever model that doesn't seem profitable right now in a mining operation and you can just reuse that uh, if you can reuse that to just generate your eat right now you're generating eat without getting any income at all so even if you get half of what it costs to run those units, but you can reuse the heat in a way that doesn't make noise, that's not annoying, that doesn't, you know, um, uh, decrease your air quality. I think there's a lot of potential there. So definitely we'll be putting our head more into that. And I think we're already seeing more and more solutions that are going into that direction. Just look into our immersion cooling or uh, I think it's Ashbox that uh, uh, upstream data are selling. Uh, so there's different products like that that are coming uh, that I think will be uh, making it much better for heat reuse purposes and that's going to make again mining that much more useful and that much more decentralized because man having imagine that having one or two miners in every house in Quebec like try to stop that now will it cook yes that's uh, that's uh, something we've been thinking about yeah, I need another milliwatt, uh, thousand watts. So that guy uh, probably are uh, already eating uh, your home with um, ASICs, is what I'm understanding. Let's get started with that test. I have to go sadly. Thanks, mate. Thanks for being here, Piano. You're welcome to uh, to our streams anytime. Um, if you did like, do give us a thumbs up and share with your uh, mining friends. And subscribe if it's not already done. We appreciate you being there. It's not super obvious where the issue is and those boards are frustrating because again it seems like it's uh, intermittent intermittency let's try without pulling see if we can see something more obvious 
GPU, yeah, GPU mining. Well, uh, at least there's that. So even right now, if uh, GPU mining is not profitable, you can still do it and and actually uh, reuse that heat to 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 heat your home. And it's something I actually uh, in my basement I do have just one GPU uh, that's uh, been running, but I also have some servers in that room, and so that room is uh, decently warm. I have uh, you know just normal data servers. I'm doing uh, virtualization there, different virtual machines, uh, but still it releases its fair share of of heat. Uh, so that plus one GPU uh, 3080 that's that's uh, mining just to uh, avoid having the need to open the, the the heat there. So last winter I had this exact exact setup, and even in the lowest of the lowest of the winter, I never turned on the the heat in that room, and it does it perfectly. But I'd like an ASIC, I think. Yeah, well, if you look into an ASIC, obviously I would ideologically uh, say that. I'd rather have you have a um, you know a Bitcoin miner, but the L3 Plus is definitely a good home miner for E3 purpose. Uh, one of the reasons is because you can have those fans that Raz was speaking about uh, just yesterday, and it makes it so quiet. So you keep it with the power supply uh, we've discussed yesterday, uh, just you know a standard uh, PC power supply, uh, EVGA uh, 1000 watt, whatever and you're going to be set, man, it's not going to make any noise, it's going to generate a good... Uh, personally, I'd put the 600 watts um, setting on Vinish on the L3+, Plus because you're just you're just losing 4 mega ash for 200 watts save, so obviously it's a no-brainer in my mind. Um, so yeah, I would recommend, and they are available in the shop if you do want to go have a look. Yesterday they weren't, but I did put them on since then. If you want to go ahead and get one of those T17s I'm, I'm fixing now, you can also, obviously, and the, the price is dirt cheap in my mind, in my opinion, and you can definitely compare against the other uh, sources. Um, but the thing is, T17s makes much more noise, and so you probably, uh, probably won't enjoy as much, and if you do, your wife won't. So... <laughs> That's the uh, ardor cell with those ASICs though, is the noise they make. Alright, so let's go try in uh, advanced mode and see if we can see anything different. Yeah, in the winter, profitability doesn't matter if you already have it, um, that guy says, and totally agree, 100%. So that's one of the nice things of uh, individuals uh, doing mining is because there's other ways to monetize your mining and that gets back to the previous subject we were talking before. So there's, you know, having a good uh, energy rate, there's, for instance, heat reuse where you can make it profitable. Obviously this board is passing. Okay, let's just put it, put it aside for now. Let it cool down. Do you buy miners only sell them? So I, well, it depends always on the stocks I have, right? Um, and the opportunities I have. So right now I'm not buying because I have a decent um, like opportunity to, uh, through our national cash promotion to stack a lot of hardware. And it's cheaper for me to do it this way because I'm actually just doing the repair and keeping the equivalent units. So for instance, you, uh, one of our latest customers ships us uh, 40 units. We keep 20, we ship him back 20 units. So now I fix those other 20 units I keep as a payment and I list them online and I'll be able to give you guys a much better pricing because it's so cheap for me to, to source that way. So right now I'm not buying because most of the you know sellers won't be able to sell it for cheaper than what I can um, get it that way. And ultimately, it's good for my customers because they get that much better prices. I mean, I'm listing in Canadian dollars essentially all the parts and the miners than they would be listed for in USD. So it's uh, like a 30% discount right there just by going through us. I think it's uh, pretty fair. So I did uh, flash the EEPROM there because it wasn't uh, 
uh, aligned with the other hash board, then it's all going to the same unit. So we want to have the same EEPROM all over those. This one is zero ASIC in the normal chip mode. So let's go ahead and do test without pulling and try to find where the RX breaks because it's probably an RX problem right there. So we'll see. Let's try to see here. So yeah, see my, um, no, let me bring that here and this here before it gets too hot. See my RX is uh, obviously you don't see. All right, now get back. RX is broken. All right, here it pass, 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 pass. And now it passes. So you see, just letting the board heat a bit like that and it's already passing, it's gonna make our job that much more complicated to find the stupid issue on this board. Uh, Bowser, hi, What? what's that for? An for an tester you use. So the tester I'm using right now is the Arc tester. It's um, available on our shop. You can go ahead and have a look. Uh, we do have a lot more, uh, well, we, we tested the whole, you know, uh, uh, availability of testers. So we test and we have in stock the Arc tester. We have the Pico BT. We obviously have Bitmain's test jig, which is garbage. We have the Team Miner uh, tester, and we have now the Stasic tester. Um, all of them have different, you know, pros and cons. Uh, Arc tester is definitely a good tester if you want to get your, your hands on, you want to get started. It's the most user-friendly tester. And obviously the, the thing that's the most liked by most of its users, even myself included, is the chip map you get. So if you, uh, let's say we go here, that screen, uh, uh, that screen right there. I'm having a hard time. Anyways, uh, the screen on the middle, uh, on the right, uh, is the, the chip map. And s one, one more thing that's really, uh, you know, that you can come to appreciate a lot is using Bitmain's test jig, for instance, uh, which is what most technicians will use. You have to change your firmware each time you change model. Say I want to fix a S17. It's as simple as just switching a knob on my controller here. This this here is the, the tester's controller. So it's the actual tester. And you can see I'm just switching on the knob. I'm getting a whole different chip map and I'm all ready to go ahead and make different tests on a different model. So obviously like user friendliness, nothing really beats Arc at least so far. But I am coming to appreciate a lot the Stasic tester. I still haven't shown it uh, on stream, still haven't shown it uh, um, in tutorials I, either because I'm still getting used to it. So it's something that I've received a week ago. Uh, we have the Canon uh, included version in our Stasic tester. So it's uh, also one nice addition of that tester compared to all the others that don't include Canon. Um, uh, and, and for those of you who know, the troubleshooting cannons without that tester is actually a, a big pain in the butt. So it's really nice to finally get cannon included in one of those, uh, you know, uh, ND testers. Um, so depending really on, on your budget or, or your experience or your preferences, you're going to want to choose different testers. But this one here right there is the Arc Antminer Ashboard Tester. You can find it on our shop and you can go and visit the manufacturer's website, tester.azic.repair. Uh, we are official distributor of that tester. So uh, either you make the order through them or us, doesn't really matter. Um, but it's if you're in North America, it's for sure going to be faster going through us. Same price than, than they have. So really, uh, but you, you make the order wherever you want. All right, so that board here getting out was already uh, hard to find the issue. Let's try to see if we can see something in diode mode. Uh, maybe that makes it more obvious and let it cool down this way in the meantime. If we, whoops, if we can find, uh, well, in this case, um, we'll, let it, we'll let it cool down and, and just uh, test again while it's cold and try to pinpoint the issue.
Yeah, it should be the same, essentially, yes. And this one, I just want to compare here. Nine twenty seven was a bit low, I think. Yeah, this one at nine twenty seven. So that would be coming from the first chip there. Uh, that would be the TX signal. TX is a bit weak. Uh, we're getting uh, nine thirteen if you look, and I'm getting more around nine fifty normally. So this looks a bit weak. We might want to tag that, that that chip as a potential failure. We know that our 1.8 wasn't making its way through that domain there. Let me just bring that more up there. So from here to here, the 1.8 was uh, breaking. So on that domain, we had an issue. And this domain on the TX, I'm getting something weird diode-wise. Like It's not necessarily super weird, but it's a bit low. So I want to keep that one in mind because it's possible it's my it's the cause for my issue. Uh, I think we move this a bit. Let's try to bring that. Yeah, it's a bit better. So let's try to start that test again with the chip pulling. I don't think the issue is going to be there. Yeah. Yeah, it's already getting full there. Let's try to see if it passes the advanced mode. A board like this one, if it passes, the advanced mode is a better candidate for a reflow before doing any further um, interventions because if you can't find the issue, oh, but we can't get the temperature sensor on 7. So that is interesting. Mind to there. 88. 89. Yeah, I think it's definitely worth looking into the sixth chip because if I yeah yeah, yeah the chip pulling was stopping at six two, so you know what it's worth actually giving it a small look. What I'll do since it's just uh, on the same side, I'll just remove that heatsink too, and we'll uh, reflow that chip and see if we get anything uh, better. While we're there, and we are nearing uh, the two hour mark, so I would love to have at least another of those ash boards done by the next 15 minutes. And maybe that's going to be it for me today, we'll see, uh, because I do have as usually more stuff to do um, but all hope is not lost because Raz is here and I think uh, I have to confirm with him and maybe he's on the chat and he's gonna be able to confirm with us uh, but he, he looked motivated to do another stream I'm not sure but that's what I felt I felt an energy from him so maybe he's gonna confirm to us And commit to what a fifth L3 Plus stream in consecutive business days. So, for those that didn't follow uh, lately, uh, we've been getting some purchases for L3 Plus, and so uh, we made some more L3 Plus boards uh, during the streams this week, so we can list more of those uh, miners for to answer for the demand. Um, list more on the website, but there's also some uh, L3 Plus coming in for um, repairs, and we should receive a fair lot. So, 
Uh, I expect there's going to be more streams uh, with Raz doing the L3s because L3 is essentially is uh, it's his thing, right? He, uh, he he is the most efficient to work on the L3 plus from the team, and uh, he knows them by heart. He started with the L3 plus. He started in mining uh, on his own with the, with the L3 plus, and then got introduced to us uh, when he wanted to fix his uh, his his own miner actually. Uh, but he was doing electronics himself too, and we were speaking. And at the end of the day, I told him, you know what, just just come in that day and try to fix those machines, and we'll see. And we'll we'll give you the tool, we'll give you uh, what we know, uh, etc., and and try to do it. And so uh, got on board, took the took the boards we gave him, took the task, and just figured it out. And so uh, yeah, whenever we have L trees. That's Raz's thing. But I think he is not, he is no longer with us on the stream, so it's possible that we. Um, it's possible also he left because um, normally on the Thursdays doesn't do uh, does little or or no time uh, on the Thursdays, um, so it's possible he went home before traffic gets on the highway. I'm not too sure. Let me see here. I do have some notifications. I need to look quick. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. I was looking into my uh, millions of uh, notifications. Like the shirt, Bitmain Swag came from a Mining Disrupt uh, conference I went in, uh, what was it, in July, I think. Time flies, man. Man, I'm rocking the Bitmain Swag and they still won't make me the warranty center in Canada. What are they waiting for? You guys just send them send them all an email, you know, write to them. I have a I actually have a lot of my customers that are writing to them and telling them, you know, like they want to use us for for warranties. They don't want to ship it to China. It's so stupid. Um, we're here. We're doing those repairs. We're actually better than most of the warranty centers. That you know, one of our customer. <laughs> I don't know if he's on chat or if he's, you know, if he's gonna be able to uh, relate. And say, but you know, one of our customers here is sent like 40 S19s to the uh, warranty center in New Hampshire, and they replied to him, "We don't have the parts," and shipped him back all of his stuff. And so he had to pay the shipping, getting in, shipping out, for a warranty he was supposed to qualify for, and they didn't have the parts, so they didn't do the fix and charge him still for the shipping and everything. And so he just went with us. He came. He he paid. For, for his repairs, unfortunately, as an out of warranty repair. And uh, I mean, we had the parts, we had everything. We did this thing in like a week. So I don't know what, uh, we, we've been in discussion with Bitcoin for being a warranty center, but they're taking their sweet time. Let's start with, uh, I'm all test there. I already said it at the start of the stream. L3 Plus strikes back episode five. Oh, so, well, I wasn't sure if you were serious about that, but that is duly noted. So I will uh, finish on that board and, and uh, give you the room, uh, Raz, because uh, do still have a lot of uh, boards to go through, I reckon. And I do have a lot to go through uh, on my side as well. And now it's passing. <laughs> All right, so you know what? Those, uh, this is another candidate for reflow. So let's just do that because 
it's passing, but for you know the two, three, four, five uh, cycles at first, it's not. So obviously, when we're gonna put that board into a unit, what's gonna happen? It's gonna try to prompt for the for the chips. First time, first attempt zero. Second attempt zero. Third attempt zero. Machine will discard the board. So it's too intermittent, and it's probably just a, you know a cracked solder or something on, inside the board. And so uh, as soon as it eats just a little, boom, it starts replying back. And so those boards we just did the. Um, uh, ultrasound cleaning on in, on them, I believe. I don't recall that we did um, reflows because there are some batches we'll just do the reflow right away because we can see like the the, the 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 bad quality of the board. But those boards, again, when they have that fat, you know, um, heat sink like that, uh, normally they tend to be pretty pretty uh, decent, pretty good. But it doesn't come to say that there's no you know uh, cold solder joints on the on the single uh, solders. So let's flash that board again. We want to make all our hash boards uh, running on the same EEPROM so they're able to uh, uh, run inside the same machine without any problem. Obviously, if you're using any custom firmware such as uh, uh, Brains OS or Vinish, you won't, uh, it won't matter, the EEPROM. But uh, if you're running on Bitmain firmware, then you'll notice. OK, let's be quick and find where it's breaking. OK, it's already breaking here and that domain 1.8 1.8 oh, and 1.8 <laughs> like I don't even get the time so it's another another candidate for refund I'm pretty sure I mean it's it's so stupid it has to be a cold solar joint so next um, T17 stream because I believe there was going to be a lot more of those um, uh, based on what we're working on right now, uh, like if I have it my way, there's going to be uh, multiple hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, T17s to go through in a very short amount of time. You flux and reflow all the ASICs, so it depends. Um, so there are many ways to do the the reflow. The kind of reflow I'm talking about when we have that kind of issue here is really an, an hashboard reflow. So getting the whole hashboard, you know, uh, solders reflowed. So you use uh, there's you know there's ovens uh, that you can use for that uh, reflow ovens. Uh, if you're not using, if you're using a standard oven instead, you have to look for, con uh, you know, a convection. So you have to use the, uh, the the convection to eat and bring the the the, the solder to the melting point. Um, so you don't have to use elements. If you're using elements, you're going to create damage to your board. But if you're using convection, uh, that should work. Do S19 next. Yeah, I think uh, most S19 we had in shop right now are done. I think there's two left. There are S19 AL, but they are they are giving us a pretty uh, hard time right now. So we'll see if we do those on stream or no. Because some of them bigger problems. You want it's not that we don't want to share them. It's just that we want to keep our mind focused on that issue and really you know make the figuring out. So when you uh, when you have the stream, you have to uh, keep the chat in mind. No, uh, we want to at least keep the chat in mind. It's always doing that. Let's try without pulling, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna. I'm going to get my 1.8 everywhere, and it's going to be the same thing there. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
So same thing there. So yeah, next stream I'll make sure we have um, either boards that were already reflowed or maybe just uh, I'll give them a five cycle test before I uh, bring it on stream because those are a bit annoying for streaming content. I mean, there's not much for me to, to show you there. There's only two boards I was uh, able to um, to uh, make a troubleshooting and even then it's possible that uh, just doing the reflow would have uh, would have helped there. So uh, let's let's bring another let's do another T17 uh, stream very shortly. But let's bring uh, maybe some of those more sick boards I have in stock. I do have some of those boards that we um, prepared for upgrade. They were coming from very sick machines. Some of them uh, sold to customers that bought from from China on uh, Alibaba, AliExpress, or whatever. And uh, you know some some of our uh, Customers didn't get already scammed by us, but I mean by uh, Alibaba and AliExpress sellers, and so they got like those crazy broken uh, units. Um, what what I would call essentially scams, because most of the times we could uh, find some heat sinks even attached with silicon, uh, which is you know uh, the stupidest thing I've seen. Didn't have much success with the oven, but was able to do an old laptop chipset recently with an cheap reflow station surprising much heat it needed to reach the temperature yeah so um, definitely you know we use reflow stations as well we use uh, we have that uh, big Wagner uh, gun uh, you know yellow gun that we can use also to uh, reflow the chips all at once I will do this mostly on um, uh, you know upgraded boards because you have all the heat sinks that are already removed the oven uh, convection oven you try to use that or reflow oven you try to use that only if you have still all your heat sinks on top of the board because going yeah what i was doing traditionally is remove all the heat sinks reflow with the gun and then put back all the heat sinks and while it works great it's uh, way too much time consuming for the same result at the end of the day and um, so yeah Anyway, so this board here, now we stop at 24, it's worth having a look, but it's really possible it does the same trick to us. Less economical, yes, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, three times, if not four, the, the amount of time to, uh, to fix. But the first time we did the reflows is the way we did it. Is remove all the heat sinks, reflow the chips, and then put back the heat sinks. So um, that chip there, I found uh, with the normal chip pulling. I found a voltage value for clock at 62, which makes it out of range. So we'll try to uh, change that chip and see what's up. But at first we had this issue there. Uh, chip count seems to pass now. We'll take care of this one and try to uh, launch the advanced test mode again and see if that temperature sensor that's right there that was missing is back now. I do uh, enjoy uh, you guys being on the stream with us. Um, we're trying to do you know, more and more content. We're trying to uh, build uh, that community and everything. If you are not already on our Discord channel, please go ahead and, and up on there. Have a chat with us as well. Um, and give us any suggestion that would make this content more uh, you know, useful to you, more appreciable, uh, more entertaining, whatever we can do to uh, to keep building that community uh, but in any case I do thank you for the time taking your time and being with us makes uh, doing what we do uh, much more nice and uh, we get a lot of uh, people thanking us for the content and everything and it makes us very happy to see that we can uh, we can be useful in that way for the community right <clears throat> it's 
So for those of you who are uh, game enough, after I finish this board, we'll pass the puck to um, Raz for a fifth consecutive L3 Plus hashboard repair session. And so I'll definitely make myself uh, available in the chat. I don't know if I'll be 100% um, attentive because sometimes I'm working on some other stuff at the same time, but I'll try to keep on uh, replying to the chat and uh, everything. So if you want to keep on going on this ju repair journey with us, you are more than welcomed in the coming stream. Something I still haven't uh, fixed yet, and I mentioned wanting to do it in the past, but uh, still haven't done, and I have like maybe hundreds of those hashboards just lying around, uh, is Dragon Mint T1. I did, like, at first, first, first did fix some, but really it was more like uh, blindly fixing because I wasn't really understanding back, th back then when I was working on those boards, the, the whole process of what I was doing, and I was like more lucky when I fixed one than anything else. But now that I really have a good grasp of it, and, and we did take some uh, measurements of the uh, T1s, and we do have the PICO, BT, and uh, the Stasis tester that can uh, test those as well with the same kind of interface we're having here, I think it would make uh, good stream content right there. It's, it's an oldie but a goldie, right? Uh, I mean, uh, Dragon Mint, for those who don't know, I've been the first challenger to Bitmain hegemony. Um, so back in 26, uh, back in 2017, actually, uh, Antminer S9 was like 90% of the mining market uh, before MicroBT really was a thing. Um, because I, at that time, for those who don't know, the developer of MicroBT uh, was actually working for Bitmain and was the, is the one that designed the S9. And so that designer, since he didn't get the recognition he was uh, expecting out of Bitmain, decided to do his own thing and start MicroBD. But in the meantime, the only uh, uh, company that came to uh, you know challenge uh, Bitmain was Elong Mining, which was launched by uh, some anonymous uh, account. We still, at least, I still don't know um, who it is uh, to this day. Uh, his username is Alias was uh, BTC Drake, and uh, so yeah, they've launched uh, Elon uh, Mining. Uh, they did the Dragon Mint, which was challenging the S9 uh, with 14 terashes back then, with a new miner, 16 terashes, same energy consumption, and so that was about a 20% increase, something like that, 15% increase maybe in energy efficiency, and so. It was uh, re really exciting, not only the efficiency thing, but also having a challenger to Bitmain uh, Monopoly during all that, that time. And then, um, well, it didn't go too well, to be honest, for Dragon Mint. Uh, like, it was too little too late uh, in the fact, in the sense that uh, Bitmain already had, you know, uh, shipped all their s to the market. Like, they already had that, that big position. And... 15% increase in energy efficiency by the time they started shipping. Bitmain was already coming with the uh, 15th generation, which was, you know, uh, already a bit more uh, energy efficient than the Dragon Mint. And so it's, it's, it's sad in that sense, but it still got to be a, a really great, uh, it, it still turned out great in the sense that first the company wasn't a scam, they shipped an actual product and it gave birth to a movement uh, to have more manufacturers, and so that's when we started to see MicroBT popping with the first West Miner they've released uh, back then. I believe it was the M10, and uh, and today we have MicroBT taking something uh, around 30, 35, maybe 40 percent of the uh, market shares for mining hardware. So that's nice. We have Canon, which has always been involved, but has been going, you know, decreasing in the market shares they've been getting. Lately, they've been getting more market shares as well uh, and we do have some more contenders like gold shell or ipolo or even just miner uh, that are more into you know all those crypto altcoins stuff uh, but there's a lot more competition today uh, than there was back in uh, 2017 so to me 
that's something I would call success to start with. Um, so I went through my foam of T17s there. I have four boards that I want to get back uh, to, but only after a reflow because I feel like we're going to lose our time there. Uh, two boards that we fixed, maybe we could have fixed to start with with a reflow, but still we, we fixed them on stream. And one more board that's uh, way too hot right now for me to make another test. But we'll just maybe wait for this one to get a, a bit more cool. Hopefully that change there will get us to 30 chips. We'll be able to rock the advanced test mode with the temp sensors and see if this one came back from the reflow there. And um, that's going to be it for the T17 stream. So then I'm going to uh, give room for Raz to start on his L3 plus stream. So let's give it a bit more time. So any other uh, question for me while I'm uh, I'm on stream is the is the time. Um, uh, otherwise, I'll still be during uh, Raz's stream available on the chat. Maybe you can give it a bit of a hand to uh, cool down there. Is that? Yeah, it's working. All right, getting to 30, so that's good. Let's try to see what the advanced uh, testing mode with uh, temp sensors is saying. What we want to see especially is if this one came back. Found four, boom, there you go. So a simple reflow, just like probably the four other boards I stacked there. Um, is going to cut it and we had to change this one here unclear if I just did a reflow if it would have worked I could have done that uh, but I went with a change because I was measuring actual bad values while um, just a, when just reflow will do the trick normally you'll still measure the good values even though the signal doesn't pass it will still measure good so uh, in that case this one was measuring bad so I took on me to just change it not ask too many questions and it seems to have paid off so I'll put back the heat sinks on this one, and that's going to be it. So uh, thank you, everybody, for being on the stream again. We really enjoyed that. Uh, it's you guys that are watching and are participating that makes uh, this, you know, fun for us to do. Uh, we'll keep on doing more. I'll do more even uh, myself uh, in the coming days as well. Uh, so for today, I'll give the room for Raz, uh, L3 Plus um, stream. So maybe, uh, I don't know exactly when he wants to up on, but let's say uh, give us a 30 minute break at least and we'll, uh, we'll get um, on stream for the rest of the night. Thank you all for being there and see you in the next stream. Bye-bye.